Hey everyone, I'm so excited to be here with you again for another episode. Today we're talking about big feelings, <laughs> like being angry, I'm really upset and mad. You know, we all get angry sometimes. That's just how it is. But it's what we do with that anger that counts. So let's talk about it. Also, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to catch more of our videos. And stay watching until the end so that you can find out what's a fallen on my noggin. Here we go! Why, Ayata? I'm so mad! If I find out who did this, I'll dive in, pitch to the left, zoom to the right, tuck in, lock on target, and BAM! Hit him with the stinger! Oh, that's funny, I hear something. Sounds like a bee. Oh, it's Amelia! Target in sight! Charge! Let's run! Ah! Amelia, stop! There's no stopping me now! You're in for it! But I haven't done anything! Do you surrender? Huh? Do you surrender? Yes, yes, I surrender! What have you done with my honey? Your honey? I, I didn't take any of your honey. You haven't? No. Well, somebody did, and they're in for it. Well, maybe I can help you with that, but first you've, you've got to calm down. Calm down? Calm down? How can I calm down when all my honey is gone? Do you know how hard I worked for that? Do you? Do you? I'm sure that you worked very hard for it, but if you don't calm down, then I can't help you. But I don't even know how to calm down. Perhaps if I sting someone. No, uh, perhaps we can come up with some other ideas, some better ideas. Better than stinging someone? Like what? Well, um... Maybe we can come up with some ideas. Boys and girls at home, could you help Amelia with me? Oh, good. That is a relief. Now, Amelia, it seems like you're dealing with some big feelings today. Big feelings? Yeah. You're really angry that someone stole your honey. So angry that you're ready to sting them. That's right. Well, it's okay to be angry. But when we have these big feelings, we need to do something called practicing self-control. Kids at home, have you ever felt really angry? Have you ever had big feelings like Amelia and needed to practice self-control? So they know what it's like. They do, and so do I. And you know, even Jesus does as well, but we'll get to that later. Right now, we need to calm down by doing something called practicing self-control. Control? Ah, I'm great at that. If you haven't already noticed, I'm one of the best pilots around. Well, I'm not talking about flying controls. I'm talking about self-control, learning to pilot our behaviors. Pilot our behaviors? That's right. You see, when we're feeling these big feelings, sometimes they take us in a wrong direction. So we need to take control back and move forward in the right direction. Sort of like when you're spiraling downward in your plane and you need to grab hold of the controls, pull hard on the yoke. That's a plane steering wheel. And stop the spiral to regain some altitude. Actually, yeah. <laughs> okay, so how do I do it? Hmm, great question. Kids, when you have big feelings, what do you do? Those are some good ideas. You know, Amelia, one of the best things that you can do is make a plan. Ask an adult to help you come up with some ideas as to how you can practice self-control. Make a plan. Got it. Then what? Well, as part of that plan, you might come up with some strategies that will help you when you're feeling angry. Maybe they distract you. Or maybe they help you get some of that energy out. For example, uh, counting to 10, or taking deep breaths, or giving somebody a hug. Maybe even just doing some exercises will help. Make a plan, find a strategy that works for you. Got it. Anything else? Yes, actually there is one more very important thing. You can pray and ask Jesus to help. Right, 
You did mention something about Jesus. <laughs> yes, I did. You see, because of Jesus, we can show self-control. Jesus is our helper in all things, and he even promised to send us the Holy Spirit, which will help us show self-control. It says so right in the Bible. Hmm, like a powerful ally? Huh, it's always good to have a wingman. That's right. The Holy Spirit gives us a tremendous advantage when it comes to practicing self-control. So, Amelia, why don't we practice some of those deep breathing exercises right now, and we can also pray and ask God for help. All right. Kids at home, while I help Amelia, why don't you take a look at this Bible story? Okay, Amelia, deep breath. All right, everyone, it's time for our Bible story. Now, since we're talking about big feelings today and how we need to show self-control, I thought we would take a look at a story from the Bible when Jesus demonstrated some big feelings and showed self-control. <laughs> That's right. Jesus was both fully God and fully human. So like us, he also had some strong feelings at times. Our story today can be found in the book of John, starting in chapter 2, verse 13. Let's take a look. Jesus, along with his disciples, had gone up to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. Now in Jerusalem was the temple, and the temple was considered a very holy place. It was the place where people from all over the land could come to meet with God. The prophet Ezekiel described it as the place where God's own feet touched the ground. At the temple, people could come and worship God through prayer and sacrifice. When Jesus and the disciples came to the outer courts of the temple, he saw something that was not right. Instead of the temple being a place of worship and prayer, people were busily buying and selling things. They were rushing back and forth with animals, exchanging money, and doing all sorts of business they weren't supposed to. They were making it hard for other people to worship God freely. Hello, I've come to worship God at the temple. How much for a sacrifice? 10 coins. But yesterday you charged me only five coins. Well, today it costs 10. Perhaps I should make it 20. 10 is fine, 10 is fine. Jesus looked around at all that was happening and became very angry. He couldn't stand to see the Holy Temple being used this way. So Jesus grabbed some nearby rope and turned it into a whip. First he chased away the animals, then he turned over the tables of the people exchanging money. He shouted at the people selling doves, get out of here, how dare you turn my father's house into a market. After all the chaos, the people came to Jesus and said, What miraculous sign can you show us? Can you prove your authority to do all of this? Jesus replied, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it up again in three days. Ha! It has taken 46 years to build this temple. Are you going to raise it up in three days? What the people didn't understand was that Jesus was talking about his own body. He knew that the people were upset. He also knew that eventually they would hurt him kill him even, but that he would be raised back to life in three days. You see, Jesus was both fully God and fully human. So he dealt with all the same emotions that you and I do. But unlike you and me, he never sinned. He always showed self-control. So even when he got angry, he used it to do good. Now we, with self-control, can use our anger in the same way. We can avoid sinning in our anger by showing self-control, which is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. That means that when we show self-control, we become more like Jesus. We get help from the Holy Spirit to use our anger to do good instead of to do wrong. Let's say our main point together. Because of Jesus, I can show self-control. Good job. Go, go, go! Jump, jump again! Oh, did you see that? Close one. All right, 
we did it! Thanks, Pastor Doug. Those breathing exercises were pretty helpful. Maybe next time I'll try some exercises too. Oh, yeah, that would be great. But you know, there is one tool that I actually forgot to mention earlier. Well, what is it? God's Word, the Bible. I see. When we're feeling angry, we can go look for a Bible as a sort of distraction. <laughs> no, not quite. I was actually thinking about using the Bible to look up some verses that will help us show self-control, like the one from Ephesians 4, verse 26. Oh, right. Like a memory verse. I guess that works, too. <laughs> right. So, you know what time it is, kids. Time for the Go Get Your Bible Dance. Here we go. Go get your Bible. Go get your Bible. Go get your Bible. <laughs> okay, as I said, our verse is found in the book of Ephesians, but I'm going to let Trusty take it away. Go ahead, Trusty. Hello, everyone. Our verse for today comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Let's look it up together. We can find the book of Ephesians in the New Testament of the Bible. Then we go to chapter 4 and find the little number 26. Let's read it together. It says, when you are angry, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Being angry is not always wrong or bad, but allowing our anger to control us can be. We can stop ourselves from sinning in our anger through self-control. For example, if someone makes you angry, you can tell them that you're feeling angry, but you shouldn't call them names. Or if you see something that's wrong, you can be frustrated by it, but you shouldn't do something wrong in return. We can also remember it's good not to stay angry for too long. We can think of it this way. Don't go to bed angry. When the day is over, we can let go of our anger and ask God to help us practice self-control. How are you feeling? I'm not 
aren't so angry anymore. Maybe this is better than stinging someone after all. But there is one problem. Oh, well, what's that? I still don't have my honey back. Right, your honey. <sighs> hey Doug, guess what? I just found this honey, can you believe it? Right there in the open. That's my honey! <gasps> oh, uh oh Doug, run! <sighs> Hey, why isn't she chasing us? <laughs> Dusty, this is Amelia. Right now, she's trying to practice self-control. She's trying not to sting you. Oh, oh, well, that's good. Hi, Amelia. Uh, I suppose this is your honey? Sorry I took it. It's all right. Thanks for returning it. Hey, now that I've got my honey back, we can all enjoy it. I make some great honey buns. Oh, yum! That sounds good! Count me in! Go ahead, guys. I'll be right there. Well, kids, remember that because of Jesus, we can show self-control. Like Amelia, we can show self-control when we're angry. Can you think of any other times you might need to show self-control? Yeah, we need to show self-control when we choose a healthy snack instead of some junk food or when we limit how much TV and video games we watch, or even when we choose to follow Jesus, loving God and loving others. Well, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you sent us your one and only son, Jesus, who helps us to show self-control. Thank you that he went through everything we did and that he sends us his Holy Spirit to be with us and guide us. I pray that you would help all of us to practice self-control well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. All right, everyone, it's time for What's a Falling on My Noggin. Are you sure? Is that, is that what we're calling the game? Because it doesn't quite rock. We have, oh, we've already got the graphic board. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, good spin. Oh, I can't walk. I can't walk. Oh, tell me what it is. S'mores. S'mores. Oh, no. S'mores. All right. Let's play. <laughs> Whoa. Let's see that in slow motion. All right, everyone, thanks for playing. What's a falling on my noggin? Oh, the chat is dripping. Hey, kids, if you'd like to do some of our activity sheets, head on over to faithfield.com slash curriculum.